All right, um, so I was actually just sitting here thinking about what video am I gonna make today? Because if you've been following along, I've been making a video every single day for the last week, and uh, I really wasn't able to think of anything until I was actually reading through some of the forums that I'm a part of, and I started to see a couple of comments on there, and I've actually seen these, I see these all the time, actually. It's different therapists who will say something along the lines of, you know, I've been a part of this directory or this, you know, Alma or something like that for however long. I don't see any referrals. I really feel like quitting. And um, I see this in, you know, a lot of forums. People, you know, start their private practice or they're trying to start and they get very few referrals. Maybe they don't get any. It's been a few weeks, a few months, and they start to feel really discouraged. And naturally, they feel like they want to quit. They want to give up. And um, I want to speak to that a little bit today. So this is a video for therapists or for people who felt like they wanted to quit, uh, wanting to quit pursuing something that they really want to go for. And in today, we're kind of talking about private practice, right? So a lot of us, well, I, don't, I don't know about a lot, but um, I'll, I'll speak for myself. When I first went into the field, um, I always knew I wanted to go into private practice, right? It's just kind of one of those things you you hear about it, sounds really exciting, you know, you have your own business, um, but, you know, it always seems kind of like far off in the future. And then eventually you get your license and you realize, oh, this could, this, you're even closer, this is something you might be able to do, um, right? And, and, then, um, and then finally, for whatever reason, we all have a different journey. We, we get to a place where we feel like we're ready to give it a try. And um, this can be really scary. So now it's not just an exciting dream, but it's uh, uh, something we're going to try to make a reality. And, and again, that can be really, really scary. And then what I find is that when we start that journey or when we kind of jump into trying to make that a reality, we can get blasted with like some really harsh realities. Like it's hard to build a caseload or, um, you know, I, I'm hitting all these barriers to starting a business. I mean, all sorts of things happen and we can really quickly get discouraged. Um, and one of the largest sources of discouragement that I see is feeling like you're not filling up a caseload fast enough or not getting enough referrals. All right. And I want to speak to this in two parts. Uh, the first one is, um, is just kind of the, the nature of private practice. All right. And now I wanted to uh, kind of just give my own two cents about this. Um, now, on one hand, there are ebbs and flows to the seasons, all right? So if you're just starting out and it's like December, um, holiday time, in general, things slow down in, in private practice in the, uh, in the holiday months, especially before New Year's, meaning people don't get as many referrals. People are celebrating the holidays. They're vacationing, all that kind of thing. So, so referrals do tend to slow down. So if you're starting around this time, you might notice that you don't get many referrals, right? And I also know if you're just starting, you don't really, ha you haven't gone through a full calendar year and you don't really know what the natural ebbs and flows are. But let me tell you that that's one of them. The summertime is another, another um, a point in the year where things do seem to slow down as well in terms of referrals. So I say all that just to let you know that there are ebbs and flows to the year. There are times when clients... Um, reach out often, right? This is usually like New Year's around that time. You'll see that. Um, and then there's times where kind of they trickle out and you don't see as many. So I wanted to normalize that. All right. And the second thing I wanted to normalize um, in that realm um, is that, uh, let me just think, I wanna, let me collect my thoughts for a second. Yes. Is that we all grow at different rates right? Um, now I've seen a lot of different people go into private practice and you get the people who jump into private practice. They're well connected. They've got some really good training behind them and they fill up like instantly, right? No one fills up instantly, but they fill up seemingly within like a month or two. Now these are more the anomaly, but it does happen, right? So people do fill up kind of quick. Um, and then you also get people who jump into private practice. And I've seen this as well. First two, three months, nothing one, maybe two, they might not even work out. And so it's really, really slow. And oftentimes you, people like that, you don't, they're not really sharing that experience all that often. You usually hear more about the people who are filling up really quick, right? So people who don't fill up as quick and end up feeling really discouraged. Um, but I want to assure you that everyone fills up at a different rate. However, 
I've never seen a therapist who didn't eventually fill up. I know all the times are different, uh, but eventually people do fill up. And one thing you have to remember is that when you're just starting out, you're just building a caseload, everything feels very acute, right? So for example, if you only have three clients, you're just starting, right? And one discharges, that's a good chunk of your entire caseload if it's only three. You're going to really feel that um, and feel like, oh my gosh, my practice is falling apart, right? Now, let's say you finally build up to 20, 25, and a client switches insurance and has to discharge or something happens. You're not going to feel that as acutely because you already have a, a built up caseload. So things become a lot less acute and discouraging as you build up your caseload. Um, these feelings of discouragement in terms of building caseloads and feeling you're not getting clients, this tends to be seasonal, right? I see most of the time this happens for people who are just starting, all right? So that whole kind of dialogue right there is more about me sharing with you the normalcy of building up. It takes time. There's ebbs and flows. Don't give up, all right? Don't give up. Now, the second part of this um, is we don't just sit there and wait then, well, you know, thanks for sharing with me, that is normal, that, that's all good and dandy, but then are there things we can actually do? Are there things we can improve upon to perhaps expedite the process or, or make it better? Of course, and um, a couple of things that you can work on. Um, some of these might sound cliche, some of them might be new for you, um, but why don't we start with the cliche ones first? You know, a couple of things we can do is we can kind of think about our profiles, right? Our directory profiles, and in particular, the headshot, your image, what does that look like? Is it professional? It, I don't mean like you need to get it done professionally, but is it um, like a, a well-lit photo with an appropriate background? Um, you know, is it is it a nice headshot, right? That's one thing. I think that, yeah, that gets overlooked. Um, and then number two is, um, what is the what does our actual profile say, right? Now, I've made a lot of videos about you know how to write, I didn't actually make a tutorial about it, but there's a couple ways you can write the profile. Uh, you can write it in the way of like, um, like a persuasive writer, like really speaking to a client's needs. Uh, this is often you know a strategy people use. So a client reads your profile, it feels like it's speaking to them, and then they say, hey, this person knows what I'm going through, let me book. Uh, another option, and, and this is a strategy I use that works quite well uh, for me, again, all strategies are different, um, is a strategy where I kind of write to um, our skill set, our training, our background. So if you if you go to my psychology today, you'll notice I talk a lot about DBT and ADHD um, and kind of our expertise in that. And the intention there is that when a client reads that, they'll say, "Oh, these these this practice knows about DBT and ADHD. I've been looking for that," and then we'll go ahead and and book with us. Um, but needless to say examining and taking some time to look at your profile and how it's written might be a really great starting point and give you some, you know, something to do as you wait to build up your caseload. Um, the next thing you could do um, is, uh, these, are, these are more practical, you might want to try some other directories. One that people often hesitate to try is ZocDoc. Um, uh, a couple of people are scared of the reviews, I know that, and then also the cost of ZocDoc um, is quite high. However, it is a platform where a lot of clients go to look for providers. Um, I've, I'm on it myself. I find it to be a helpful resource for referrals. So it might be something you want to try out. Um, you can also consider um, a Google My Business profile. Uh, I actually just released a whole tutorial about how to do Google My Business. This is entirely free. Uh, and this tends to yield some great results for people. Now, again, nothing is guaranteed, but these are just increasing our referral sources. All right, so you can try Google My Business. Um, and then also the other thing you can consider is trying Google Ads. Now, I wouldn't go ahead and just sign up for Google Ads on your own and try to do that via like YouTube tutorials. I would hire a company to help you, um, but they can be up and running relatively quickly. They are quite costly. And depending on where you're located, they may or may not be that effective. I'm in New York City, so Google Ads tend to be really competitive. Um, they can be effective, but not as much in New York City is what I've kind of learned. If you're outside of New York City and not as uh, not as saturated of a market, I've heard that Google Ads can work really fast um, and they can be really effective. They just have a big upfront cost. 
So that's another option for you, uh, something you can consider. Um, right? And, and then I guess finally, the last thing I want to say is don't give up. All right. Um, like I said earlier in the video, I've never seen a therapist not fill up. Right. I have seen a therapist take a long time to fill up, but they finally got there. If you've been pursuing private practice for a while um, and you're now just getting started, uh, you're feeling discouraged. It's an emotional roller coaster. All right. Uh, that feeling will come and go uh, no matter how long you've been doing this. So that is something, uh, you know, just to know. And uh, yeah, don't don't give up. Keep working at it. Keep working hard. Um, you know, this isn't something just that just happens naturally, um, right? I think part of it is is a waiting game and being patient, and the other part is a learning and figuring out what strategies are going to work for you. So think about it that way too. If referrals aren't coming in, um, it's a time to kind of consider and think about well, then what strategies can we uh, deploy? Now, don't start changing things rapidly just because things aren't working within like a day or two or even a week or two, but give things a month or two to see how they shake out. All right. Um, anyway, these are just some thoughts I had uh, about, um, yeah, people wanting to give up. Um, I've been there. I know a lot of people are there as well at times. Don't give up. All right. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your weekend and I'll see you in the next video.